All right, welcome to this Vector Ink tutorial. Today, I'm going to walk you through designing a logo. And the best part is you don't need to be an artist to follow along. Vector Ink is all about making vector creation easy and accessible for everyone. Because vector design, unlike other forms of art like painting and, and digital drawing, right? You don't need to be an art. You need to be an artist to do those very well. You have to have a skill. When it comes to vector design, vector design is usually used for tracing. Okay. But in this video, we're not going to be tracing. We're going to be using an image as a template. Okay. I'm going to show you techniques and skills and tools that are free and available for anyone to use that will allow you to take an image off of the internet and use it as a template and get the logo that you desire out of it. So let's get started. First, go to vectorinc.io and then tap on new project to dive into the canvas. Okay. So now that we're in the canvas, I'm going to show you how to use these tools and I'm going to show you some techniques that will allow you to take an image and turn it into the logo that you want. Okay. If you have a logo in mind, assuming you do, because you, I'm assuming you're here because you want to know, learn logo design or you need a logo, but you don't want to have to deal with the price, the, the, the pricing behind it, or you can't find the one that you want on the internet or AI just isn't cutting it for you. So you realize that you got to do this thing yourself or you want to get into local design, whatever the case may be. You don't need to have serious skill to make this happen. Okay. So let me show you how this is done. First off, if you don't already, I would highly suggest you get the Vector Inc. Chrome extension. Just go to the Chrome store. Go to search, type in a vector ink right here and install it. It will help in this process um, and, 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 and it'll help. It'll help you going going forward. It's, it is a very useful tool. I'm going to go into Google search and I'm just going to type in birds. OK, I'm going to hit images. OK, see a bunch of bird images. We're going to make a bird logo out of one of these images. OK. With the Vector Inc. Chrome extension, if you open it and hit enable pin, what this allows you to do is it you see this little pin icon in the top right corner of every image that I hover over. That will allow you to import a traced SVG of the photo, the color palette, or crop and resize the image that you select. Okay. All we want to do is import the photo. If you don't have this Chrome extension, just right-click, save it to your uh, device and import it into Vector Inc. And I'll show you how to do that. But hitting import photo will bring it right into Vector Inc. Otherwise, you can hit this menu and hit import here and open it from your device. Okay. But once you have the image on to the canvas, what you want to do is scale it up first if it's not scaled. So I'm going to tap on this top right handle so that way there's only one handle. That way I can scale it evenly, like so. Okay. And then with it selected, we're going to open up the layers. And then we're going to tap on the image of the layer. I'm going to have to hit it twice. And then open up this layers property for this raster image here. And then we're going to cut the opacity down to about right there is fine. Less than half. Hit save. And then lock this layer in place so you can't click on it. Now we are going to use this as a template. Okay. We're not going to sit here and trace around every, um, curve and line and shape on this image. We're not going to be tracing the image. We're going to use it as a template and draw what we want around it. And the thing about logo design is the logo has to be simple. All right. It's better. The simpler it is, the better. And I'm going to show you how to simplify this in its most simplest form, in a very easy way to make a, this what you want it to be. And you can apply these techniques to any image that you come across. So let me show you. 
First, we're going to start by using the circles. So hit the rectangle tool and then tap on it again. And you're going to see more shapes. Tap on the circle tool. Okay. Now, tap on this constraint button here. That way the dimensions are locked in place. Okay. And just put a circle on the canvas like so. And then go back to the selection tool. Okay. And then make sure that, you know, there's only one handle here so that we can scale it evenly. And what we want to do is we want to get the circle to match this curvature here, if you're using the same image, okay? But you want to find, well, what, I, what, I, what I end up doing is finding the, the, the largest curvature, and I start there, okay? And in this case, it's this bottom half, all right? So I'm going to try and match it. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you see, this isn't perfect, okay? But I'm good with this. This is fine here, okay? So I have this shape. Now I want to get to the beak. <laughs> And then the, this portion of the head. And then we're going to basically probably just do a straight line all the way down here. Okay. And then another straight line this way. Okay. So I have my circle here. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to use this for the beak. Okay, let's scale it down some more. And I just wanted to come up right there, okay? Because the beak is going to go, so we're going to have the body, okay? And then it's going to veer off into the beak right here, okay? We're using these circles as guides for our shapes, okay? Let's select both of these circles, okay? You can do so by dragging and selecting or using this hand icon to select multiple objects. Open up the stroke properties and then tap on scaling strokes. We want to do this so that way the strokes of these objects don't grow as we zoom in and out, okay? we can see just how close they are to each other. We want them to be as close as possible because we're going to use the path builder tool to join all of these circles, circles together and carve out our desired shape. All right. So yeah, this circle was at another one. And this one is going to form the Head slash beak. Okay, so it's going to have to be big. This is a pretty wide curve, so we're going to expand it like so. Okay, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You see, I'm way off off of the off the lines here, but that's fine. That's fine. It's going to come together anyway. Okay, we're not trying to trace. We're trying not trying to replicate this image. We're just using it as a template. Okay, so, so far our shape is, we have the belly, veers off into the beak, okay, from beak to head, and then from head is going to come down into the body, okay? So now for the body. So how do we want to do this? I'm going to duplicate this larger circle here, and I want to Bring it up here. I want this let's see, let's line it up here. So the head is going to be pointy and it's going to come up and you're gonna have your the the back side curve here. And what we can do is add another circle. So we can get this curve too. Let's do that. Let's duplicate this one here. And let's connect these circles. And you want to get them as close as possible. Again, keeping scaling strokes turned off will help you determine how close these lines actually are. Okay. So 
we have our body here. It comes here, and we basically have the shape of our bird without the tail. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this out. And this is a good time to start cutting. With the path builder tool, you want to cut early. You don't want to try and do too much at once. Okay. So let's select all of our circles. Okay. And then hit the path builder tool. All right. And then we're going to turn on join mode. Okay. That's this pencil icon right here. And we're going to start with our belly. So select this line right here for the belly and then bring it up to the beak. Then from the beak to the head, the head down the back and the back to the back around to the belly. And then you should have something like this. And then select off with the SIPA selection tool, open up the fill color and turn off the alpha channel. So that way we can see what we're working with. So this is what we have so far. Now let's get the tail. The tail is straightforward, doesn't require any path building. Just go to the pen tool. In my case, I'm just gonna grab the pen tool and I'm just going to draw a straight line. Again, simple, straight line here, straight line here, and then back to the body, okay? Then from there, activate the selection tool Select that path, and you want to, you see how I have the lines overlapping. That's intentional because I'm going to hit the path builder tool and cut it out, okay? So let's go back in case you missed that. I'm going to select this single shape, hit the path builder tool, and then I'm going to, you can either highlight inside, okay, and it'll find the paths to select or, let's go back, or activate join mode and then manually select the paths, okay, and once it turns blue, you know that you have a completed closed shape. Then hit the selection tool. Now let's open up the color properties and turn on alpha, cha alpha channel again and see what we're working with. All right, now let's get this, I wanna get this little, I wanna get the beak and this little um, black coloring here on the face and maybe do the eye also. So first with the beak, let's hit the circle, Pla place a circle right here where the beak goes, okay? And then with the circle selected, hit that path builder tool again Activate join mode. I'm going to select this part, this part, here, and here. Okay, so that's the beak. And now for this little design here, that can be done with, that can be done a, a number of ways. We can use the draw tool for that. We can use the pen tool for that. We can use a series of circles for that. It really depends on how you want it to come out. I'm going to hit the draw tool. I want to see if I can make this work out better. So the draw tool automatically has a stabilizer on it. That's what that's that little pink line you see coming out. It makes drawing smooth, especially if you're not using a stylus, right? It makes it really easy. So that that works. So after that's done, I'm going to hit the path builder tool because this is already selected. And I'm just going to cut this out. And that's going to be black. All right. So now we have our bird. Let's come in here and find a color palette to go with this logo. Again, Vector Ink was made to make logo design easy. So you see how we just quickly use this image as a template to, to get these one, two, three, four shapes. Okay, now we're going to come in here and find a color palette. Okay, and this one 
is good. But vectoring comes with a ton of color palettes, right? You can open up the, the color palette list or refresh and it'll go find a color palette randomly. And all of these color palettes are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So it's hard to come up with dad design, okay? You're always going to have the colors that you need. You're going to always have, you know, tools that make shape creation super easy. So let's see. Mm, let's try this one here. So I'm going to use the red for the bird. Got the black for that piece there. And then maybe a lighter color for the beak. I'm going to try this darker color here. Let's highlight everything. Get rid of the stroke. Let's go to the layers and get rid of the raster and see what we got. And again, logos, simple. As When it's simple, we're on the right track. Okay. And this is simple. This is simple. This is as simple as it's going to get, okay? Um, aside for, from making everything black, which, you know, usually you would do if, if you want your logo to be a silhouette, white, black and white, whatever. This is simple. And this is not a bad stopping point. And I maybe try curving this, see what this looks like. That's even better. I like that, right? And what I did to do that, in case you missed it, is... I went to the point tool, selected this shape, and I double tapped on this corner here to smooth it out. Okay. And boom. I just created a logo out of this image here. And it doesn't look bad at all. Okay. Really simple. Really simple. Vectoring makes it easy. You just have to take your time and try not to build everything out at once. When you're using the path builder tool, try to take it pieces at a time. Okay. If you're dealing with a complex image, try to do parts of it at a time instead of trying to do everything at once. Okay. So there you have it. That is the